This next chapter that you are learning about is called Straight Line Graphs and it is chapter 9 in your textbook. Throughout this chapter you'll be required to watch the videos and take notes in your workbook. You'll also be asked to summarise key points from both the video and also from your textbook. And at the end of each subunit you should have a question that you bring to class. If you look in the top left hand corner the red and yellow star will help to guide you to any key ideas that need to be written down. We often use grids to be able to locate places. One of the very common forms of grids is our Melways map, which is a form of alphanumeric grid. The alphabet and the numbers will give us an identification of a square that we can then find the feature we are looking for. On the right hand side is a topographic map that uses numbers on the horizontal and vertical axes, and they are called easting and northing numbers. Not only do they identify the square that we are looking at, but they can also identify a position within the square. On a large scale, we use latitude and longitude grid lines. These lines will help to us to locate any point on a world map. However, grids are not just used to locate positions on a map. They are also used to form and display information on a graph. In order for this graph to be useful, we need to know where the information is to be placed. Below you'll see a simple graph that we use in science. The type of grid system that we're going to use in this topic is called a Cartesian plane. The word Cartesian comes from a French philosopher and mathematician, René Descartes. You'll learn a little bit more about him in a video shortly. The word plane is used to represent a two-dimensional flat surface. Well, let's find out a little bit more about René Descartes. René Descartes was a French-born philosopher who is known as the father of modern philosophy, best known for his quote, Cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. Descartes was born near Tours in France in 1596 and was educated in classics, logic and the philosophy of Aristotle in a Jesuit college in Anjou. He graduated and then studied at the University of Poitiers, obtaining his law license in 1616. He then enlisted in the army and during his spare time he studied mathematics. In 1619 he experienced a series of powerful dreams which influenced him greatly in his pursuit of science and knowledge and he acknowledged this as the focal point of his life. He spent time in various parts of Europe before he settled in the Dutch Republic. He maintained his studies and lived in various places throughout the Republic. During this time, he began his writing career, and he began to publish his new works that would revolutionize mathematics and philosophy. These works included The World, Discourse on the Method, La Geometrie, Meditations of First Philosophy, which is still a standard text on most philosophy courses, Principles of Philosophy, and Passions of the Soul. His new mathematical theories provided the basis for the study of calculus, analytic geometry, and Cartesian geometry, where geometric functions are described using algebra. He died in 1650 in Stockholm and is seen as a revolutionary thinker who tried to integrate philosophy with new forms of science, as well as with the theology of the time. He is considered one of the key figures in the scientific revolution. So René Descartes, philosopher, lawyer, mathematician, and we owe a great deal to him. In fact, uh, as you can see in the picture there of the lunar landing of Apollo 16, there are a number of features on the moon named after Reno because of his mathematics that has enabled us to locate positions not only in a two-dimensional uh, surface but also within three dimensions. Some of you, in fact, may remember our visit by Charles Duke, the astronaut on Apollo 16. Uh, Apollo 16's landing site was, in fact, at the Descartes Highlands. There's also a crater named after him, such is his influence in mathematics. Well, the Cartesian plane has a number of features that you'll need to be familiar with. Firstly, if you have a look at this picture, which you should copy down, you can see that there are an axis across the horizontal called the x-axis, and there's also an axis going vertically called the y-axis. We start from the very centre, which is called the origin, and all positions on this Cartesian plane is measured from the origin. Right, when we wish to identify a position on the Cartesian plane, we can actually look at the quarter that it exists in. 
top right hand side is called quadrant number one. They are then labelled going anti-clockwise. Quadrant two, three and four. Any point that exists on the line is in neither of these quadrants. However, sometimes we wish to have more detail. Therefore we use coordinates. And every place on the Cartesian plane can be identified by using two coordinates, X and Y. The X coordinate is listed first, followed by the Y coordinate, forming a pair of coordinates. And because they have to be listed in order, they are often referred to as an ordered pair. These coordinates are measures away from the origin, which is 0, 0. If you wish to remember which one comes first, X comes before Y in the alphabet. Now let's look at these five points. Let's try and identify the point that is in quadrant number one. First of all, I need to find its horizontal distance away from the origin. It is four points along the x-axis, therefore its x-coordinate is four. Now I want to find its vertical distance from the origin. Its vertical distance is two, therefore its y-coordinate is two. Another way that we can identify this point would be to draw lines horizontal and vertical and see where they cross the axis. This one crosses the x-axis at 4, therefore its x-coordinate is 4. Horizontally, it crosses the y-axis at 2, therefore its y-coordinate is 2. I want you to pause the video and see if you can identify the other four points. Alright, let's see how you went. Because this point lies on the line, it's going to have a zero distance across the x-axis, but it's going to have a height of 4, therefore 0, 4. This point is also on the line, but in fact it is negative 3 along the x-axis, but it has a vertical distance of 0, therefore negative 3, 0. Negative 5, negative 3, 5 across, negative 4 down. Alright, now let's look at plotting some points. On the left hand side we have five points that we wish to plot and we are going to join them with line segments. First of all, we need to draw up a grid. So we look at the numbers and try and ascertain as to the size of the grid that we require. The first number in each of the pairs is the x coordinate. So they look like they range from negative 3 to positive 3. And that is how wide I make my graph. The second number in each pair is the y coordinate. They go from 5 to negative 2. So I've drawn my scale in my y axis from 5 to negative 5. You also need to make sure that you label the axes x and y. You'll also notice that each axis has a arrowhead on each end. This indicates that it goes on forever. Now I want you to pause the video and plot those five points on a grid that you have also drawn. Alright, let's have a look at how you went. First point is negative 3, 5. Negative 3 in the x direction and 5 in the y direction. Second point, negative 1, negative 2. Negative 1 x direction, negative 2 in the y direction. 0, 3 is on the line. 1, negative 2. 1 in the x, negative 2 in the y. And 3, 5. 3 across in the x direction and positive 5 in the y direction. Now if we join them up, we should get a bit of a picture. So if you have a WC in your page, then you've done it correctly. Well done. A couple of key words that you need to remember for this topic. Firstly, a Cartesian plane. Uh, occasionally it will be referred to as a number plane. It's just the 2D grid that we are drawing up with our X and Y axis. A line is a set of points which extends without an end in opposite direction. So a line has an arrowhead on each end. A line segment is a part of that line and it has a beginning and it has an end. Midpoint, halfway between two points. The origin is the position 0, 0 and the scale is the numbers that we use on the axes. Now for this topic you'll require a ruler and graphing paper. Now on the book list there was a graph pad on it, however it would have been labelled as a science book. So please make sure that you find that and bring it to class.